Okay, first of all, the next few days, the class of Allah between Mincha Maidiv is Lila Nishmas Gershemesh Rabbi Yudha Maizel. So Maizel is sponsoring um, Monday night class. Wednesday night class, this is Yartid, is Dalit Shvat. Nisham Shirav and Aliyah. Anyway, yesterday we started learning the dinam of Kaddish, you know, about the importance of saying Kaddish for a deceased, uh, the holiness of Kaddish. So, again, there's two questions, and there's basically a question on Allah. What is, is Kaddish out of respect to the parents? Or is it not to embarrass the parents? In other words, because everybody says Kaddish, and if a child doesn't, so basically he's like insulting the parents. And we mentioned very briefly, I said the difference would be if the father tells the child, I don't want you to say Kaddish for me. So if it's out of respect for the parents, then he doesn't have to. The father says, I don't want you to. If it's not embarrassing the parent, if it's because you're embarrassing the parent, that, that he would have to do anyway. Or there's another opinion in Allah that says, what happens, let's say there's five brothers saying Kaddish. And the father said, one of them should not say Kaddish. So the problem is everybody else is saying Kaddish. He's not. So people are going to think, and maybe he's a mamzer, maybe who knows what he is. So then even the, then, if the father told him not to say Kaddish, he would have to say Kaddish anyway. Okay, now there's various dinim, who comes first. You have to understand, in halacha was like this. Years ago, it worked differently than we have today. Like for instance, I remember even growing up in many shuls. If there was a yard site, only the yard site said Kaddish. Not all the other, they, in fact, they would bang on the thing yard site and and only the yard tape would say a uh, few Kadeshim and everybody else maybe would say what? Well, it was done not only by the Yakis, it was done. <laughs> <laughs> and remember he said, yard tape, so some Kadeshim, they said, today it's a different story because everybody says all the Kadeshim, we don't have this anymore. The yard tape says it, the yard tape didn't. So there's a question, Allah, like who has precedence in these Kadeshim or for that matter, davening for the Amid. So let's say, a person, um, what? Who's on first? Who's on first, you know. Okay, so number one, it's very interesting, Allah, a member versus a non-member, no, no. member gets it. Even, let's say, the member is not a chiyuv. I mean, he's saying Kaddish for the year. And the non-member has yard site, so normally yard site comes first. But halacha says, I'm not saying it's done that way, but according to halacha, if you're a member, you come first. You have to ask permission. What now? happens, Marshall, you have like the shivas first, then shleishim, somebody is in the middle of shleishim, and somebody else is saying Kaddish for the year. So who comes first? So halachically, shleishim comes first. What happens if you have a yard site and shleishim? So then halacha says they're equal. The, pel, the, the people don't do that, but in Shekhunarach, everybody, kids are big Shekhunarach, all the, all the Paschim write, yard site and Shleishim are equal. So in the Shekhunarach, what does it say to do? It says, you make a girdle, a, cat lot, a kosher, kosher lottery, and let God decide, so to speak, who's going to... And they switch off. One half is married, one half is Shachris, one half is first half is Shachris, so many half is the other half is Shachris, after Ashri of Olatzian. Now, it's interesting, according to Allah, because Paschum talk about this here, when you want to make a girdle, there's a total way of making a girdle. For instance, well, let's say you have uh, Ruben and Shimon are both arguing over a minyan. One second. Oh, Zora. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand. I didn't understand it. Right you don't now. speak Hebrew. No, you speak Girdle. Girdle. I didn't hear the word. Yeah. So, Let's say you have Reuven and Shimon is, are the disputants who's coming first. So somebody will think, okay, we'll write uh, one piece of paper will say Reuven, one piece of paper will say Shimon, you put it into a container, and then you pick one that's not a trader girl. That is not a trader girl. According to trader, a girl is like this. You have, have Reuven and Shimon, you write a one paper Reuven, one paper Shimon, you put it into a bowl, and another paper you write Zaha merits, Loi Zaha doesn't merit. And then that's in another bowl. And then you pick one from this bowl and one from this bowl. And then you see the name. Is it Ruvain Zaha or Ruvain Loi Zaha? 
But that's a girdle according to Torah. That's been a Shemayim. Stam, you put both names on a piece of paper and pick out one that halachically doesn't mean a girdle. So it says in halacha, if you're deciding, let's say, who should have him for the Yomid or this, but again, halachically, somebody who is a member uh, comes first. Okay, next. Um, okay, and just a uh, bunch of these things are not that relevant. Um, okay, if there's a gyro between them and it says the Chavayi. Somebody is like dominating like the Amud almost every day, and then somebody that is a member suddenly needs to start to use the Well, when he starts saying Kaddish, he's Shleishan. Yeah. So, so then he comes first. What happens when they're both equal? Both members, both equal. Yeah, and they both want to daven for the yom. Some people don't want to daven for the yom. So what do you do in a case where both people are members, both people are equal obligations? Yeah. Now, there's either both yard site or both uh, five months into St. Kadi, whatever. So either you work it out with the girdle, but not one of them doesn't get everything. You divide it up. You make a girdle who's men, chashach, you know, whatever it is. And that's the way, that's what Allah says you do. Now, obviously, if you can make two minyanim, you try to make two minyanim. Up until Yishtabach, Huh? Up until Yishtabach. Up until Yishtabach is not davening for the Yom. There's no Kaddish, there's no, uh, like, there's nothing. And how would you break, how would you divide it? Some pos can write and some pos can question it. Uh, the Minigayilam, by the way, is they change it Ashri of Olitzian. Because then, Ashri of Olitzian has Kaddish to Skabal, and the other Kaddish. The problem with that is, says the Shulchan writes, and Rav Chaim now writes, there could be a problem with that. He says, even though everybody does it, but Lachari doesn't understand how, because the Kaddish Tiskabel belongs to the guy that repeated the Shmanesri. So the guy that repeated the Shmanesri is changing guard at Tashir Valati, and the second guy comes, he's saying Tiskabel, and he, didn't do, he wasn't the Chazim for Shmanesri. But Lebrel, that's the, the, what people do. Whether it's, Kaddish the Rabbanon, by the way, is another interesting thing. People are unaware of this. Kaddish the Rabbanon, you don't have to be, a person with parents could say Kaddish the Rabbanon. You can't say Kaddish Yosem. Just take a person with parents, yeah? Kadabim Tiskabel, Kadabim for the Yom and say Tiskabel and have Kaddish and all things. It's just Kaddish Yosem you can't do. Kaddish the Rabbanon, you learn, you could say, you know, if you're bar mitzvah, and you have, or even not bar mitzvah, you, if you have a minion, you could say Kaddish. The most I know in many yeshivas, I know in Eretz Yisrael for sure they do this in America, sometimes yes, sometimes no, that when Bochrim daven for the Yomid, you know, uh, yeshiva, so they're davening with the minion, they have a minion for the Yomid, and the Bochrim davening for the Yomid has parents, they say, because halachically, Kaddish the Rabbana is allowed to be said by somebody that has parents. A kid finishes a Masechta, and they do that long Kaddish, or you don't do the long Kaddish, whatever. But that Kaddish, you could say, has nothing to do with Kaddish. Kaddish Yosem, you don't say. So, you know, technically, somebody who's... And there's another thing, somebody asked to them, that's why we do it here in many places, Somebody asked the Rebbe, if there's no Chiyav in Shul, should somebody say the Kadeshim? And there's a long letter from the Rebbe Pintan back at Sefer Minhagim. The Rebbe writes, the Rebbe's of the opinion, and many others also, that um, somebody, if there's nobody else in Shul to say Kaddish, somebody who is allowed to say Kaddish, meaning they don't have parents, so then they could say Kaddish. Another interesting Shaila is, because even Hamalacha mentions this, what happens if somebody has one parent and they want to say Kaddish for some, somebody says, can you say Kaddish for somebody? According to you have to get permission from the second parent. People don't really know this. Many people say, yeah, I don't have a parent, I can say Kaddish because, you know, I, am, I don't have a parent, I can say Kaddish. But in Aloha it says if the second parent is alive, you really need to get the permission from the parent. Now you also have cases where parents are not so from, the grandkids are from, and let's say there's a yard safe for a grandparent. Now the parents are not gonna go to shul. 
So then, the din is, they want the grandson to say Kaddish. So Allah is, if the parents give permission for the kid to say Kaddish, then he could say Kaddish. Why don't kids just say Kaddish Yassin? It's the same reason why kids go out by Yisker. Okay, why do kids go out by Yisker? So the reason is Ayin Hoda. Because people are saying Yisker, and you're going to have somebody in there, it's going to be, uh, you know, I know, they are parent. So, and they're not saying, they are saying. So that's why kids go out by Yisker. It's all because of Ayin Hoda. So in order for a kid to say Kaddish, if he has both parents, he must get permission from both. Even if he has one, he should get permission. One. What about Kaddish, when we say the whole Kaddish, but if somebody is not Jew, he doesn't say that. The Rebbe writes in the back of Tilim, in the back of our Tilim, it says, and in fact, it's in the, printed in not in the Sidurim, in the, the older Sidurim, by, Kiddush, by uh, Shabbos and Varchim. The Rebbe writes that if there's a Chiyav, you say in between each Sefer. You know, you have five Svarim, so then you say in between each Sefer. If there's no Chiyav, you say one Kaddish at the end. You know, for the whole Tilim. But another thing, people have a misunderstanding, I mean, I, it's interesting, it's just lack of knowledge. When do you say... Al Yisrael, Kaddish, and when do you say Yehi Shlomo Kaddish? So it's very simple. And Tor Shebiksav, you say Yehi Shlomo. Like after Tilim, Tilim is Tor Shebiksav. So after Tilim, you say regular Kaddish, Yehi Shlomo. After anything which is of rabbinic nature, learning Mishnayis, Rabbi Shmolei Mibeshesh Yasimides, that's the Ebraisa, that's rabbinic, Teresh Baal Peh. So then you say Al Yisrael Baal Ban. It makes make sense. What do you, Al Yisrael Baal Ban, and are called Tamidei Tamidei. So you're saying about Tamidei Chachamim. So in Kaddish, um, and to Teresh Bixav, you say Kaddish Yosem. Teresh Baal Peh, you say Al Yisrael. It's a one second. So after Tilim, it's understood. You say regular Kaddish. After Mishnayis, you say Al Yisrael. What? Ashkenazim, they daven, like up until Yashavah, they have a Kaddish Yassim before, so they can really... They have a Mizmashir. Huh? Yeah. So they can really break... Yeah, the if you daven Nusach Ashkenaz, and you have a Kaddish after Mizmashir, so then that's also a way to change, you know... Yeah, but after Yashavah, then you have much more. Then you have the Kaddish in Yashavah, I mean, you have much more. Whatever, you make a girl and work it out. It says, in Allah, it says one thing. The worst thing you could do for the, what's the purpose of saying Kaddish? The Kaddish is for the benefit of the deceased. <laughs> Allah says, if it's going to cause fights, it's worse <laughs> for the deceased than <laughs> it just to, not to say Kaddish or to just not to daven for the Omid. Anytime there's a machlekes amongst the children, it's much worse. I know there's a story my father told me. There was a teacher, you know, years ago, the Hebrew school, straight from public school, the kids went to Hebrew school. So in the winter, it came out in of time. So there was a teacher, a from teacher, that was teaching Hebrew school. But, and he was a novel. He was a chiyuv that year, for the year. And, you know, if he taught the kids in the Hebrew school, he wouldn't be able to say Kaddish. If he said Kaddish, he wouldn't be able to teach the kids. So he asked the previous Rebbe, what should I do? So the Rebbe said to him that who says that teaching Yiddish to children is any less important than the Kaddish? You were talking about Chosef and the Nifter, teaching Jewish kids Torah is great. So he said you should get somebody else to, you know, for Mincha, that, whatever it is, to say Kaddish. So, but the worst thing it says in Allah clearly that if it's going to be a machlekes in any way whatsoever, then it's, it's, it's detrimental. Okay, um, I'm just seeing what the practical dinim are here. Um, okay, 11 months, yeah, we discussed. See here, in Kitsa, he's going with the old style things. He said, what happens if you have a bunch of Avelim? So they all say Kaddish, <laughs> which is by us a given. Everybody always does this. The whole fight is who gets the Yomid and who this and that. Okay, um, 
Okay, Shakra. Okay. Now, by the way, there's another interesting uh, thing that, and again, this is different in Hogim. Some people have the minik, some people don't. Like, uh, the really, Kaddish is only for parents. Or let's say, I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody, God forbid, loses a brother. But the brother has children. So they're saying Kaddish. So should the brother say Kaddish or not? So logically, there's no need for him to say Kaddish because Kaddish is being said by the children. But in many places, at least for Shleishim, some people do it for Shleishim, then they'll say Kaddish for a brother because the Avelis for a brother is only 30 days. It's not a year like it is for parents. Um, in our circles, Grado, we don't do it unless what happens, God forbid, somebody lost a brother and the brother doesn't have any sons, only daughters, or they have no children, or he wasn't married, whatever. So then they'll say for the year. The same thing if somebody, so God forbid, loses a wife, years. let's say they lose a wife, God forbid, and they don't have children. So then they'll say for the year. That's what the Rebbe did when the Rebbe passed away. He said for the year, there are no children. So he said Kaddish for the year. Then there's another interesting Shaila. Who comes first, a son-in-law or, or a brother? No, it's a discussion in Allah. Yeah, brother-in-law? No, brother-in-law versus... No, son-in-law. Son-in-law or brother. Who should come first? Because Hasli Kibbutz, it's all discussion in Allah. Which one is? So the people have different menagums. There's no set uh, rule by this. Okay, Machin Shinus, Mesumer, Machin, 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 Machin,